Hey, what is up, maggot heads? And welcome to LP Tremors, where we talk all things vinyl and horror. And once again, we are back with the Scottish man himself, Davey Gallagher. And down below, we have Ryan Gavalier from Ryan's Vinyl Destination. What's up, guys? Not much. How you doing, Tyler? Can't complain. Can't complain. Why? So, we are here once again, sixth installment of the Friday the 13th franchise. What Ryan is holding himself and what I'm about to hold right now. Friday the 13th Part 6. This is Jason Lives. So, this is coming out in 1986. Uh, directing by Tom McLaughlin. Sorry, sure. I'm gonna get into my review very momentarily, but Tom McLaughlin did a hell of a fucking job. I'll just say that. But with all that being said, Davey, thoughts on part six? Jason lives. So I said at the start of this series that part six was my favorite, and yeah. you, you you always want to um. You always want to kind of have that in your mind, but then be open at the same time mm. um, to the potential of other ones knocking it off. Because as we've discovered, um, some of them have stood up better, Some, especially watching them in short thrift like this, but enough room to kind of uh, gather your thoughts with a two-week gap each time, yeah. each fortnight. Um, the worry I had is that part six was going to go down in my estimation. I shouldn't have worried. Part six is a fucking masterpiece. I absolutely adore this film. Um, in my memory, I've always called it the universal horror um, version of Friday. And for the first act, it certainly is. Um, and first of all, um, Tom McLaughlin, apart from having a wonderful Scottish name, um, does a fantastic job um, directing this. It's one yeah. of the best, I, th I think, in fact, maybe the best looking Friday film of all of them um that that opening um it knows exactly what it wants to do in terms of the um i mean that's the opening of frankenstein you know with uh with uh clive and and uh, his assistant you know digging up corpses and whatnot that's exactly the opening it's got the, the dry ice and whatnot perfectly mm. the scene it's got more dry ice than universal ever managed um it looks terrific um, and I love that graveyard. I think that's one of the coolest sets, you know, where everything's like fenced off and ring, you know, there's, it's not just graves all over the place looking really fake. It, it, it must be a real cemetery because it's so gorgeous looking. It's really gothic, right. atmospheric. Um, it's hokey as hell the way they get Jason back, but it has to be. Um, and we'll get into why that that's perfectly fine because um, they, they very quickly tell you hey don't worry about it it's just a it's just a fun time this movie um jason um is resurrected by tommy jarvis um who's um now uh, played by a better actor um in fact played by an actor this time that was a a bold choice getting an actor to play the part this time and not that idiot from last month. Um, Tom Matthews plays him, who people might remember as uh, one of the main guys in Return of the Living Dead. Um, he's fantastic in that film. Um, he's the guy at the start who's having the whole movie explained to him, the whole zombie thing. Um, but he um, decides that he has to. Well, let's be honest, Tommy fucks everything up by accident here, doesn't it? It's all his fault. If he'd have done nothing, if Tommy had stayed in the sanatorium, everything would have been fine. But Tommy exposing Jason to the elements and then using um, using a, a spike to go through him um, and then the spike being the conductor of the electricity that brings the corpse of Jason back to life, that's what really starts everything off. Um, it's a terrific effect when you see Jason with all the maggots on and that is some lovely, lovely work. It's so much better than some of the stuff we've seen in this series so far. There's no mm. latex nonsense going in. Does it cheat a bit when, when he wakes up? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously much more decayed when you see him just as a corpse. You know, there looks yeah. like there's hardly anything there. And then when he stands up, he's, he's, he's got a lot more muscle tissue and whatnot. Who cares? Who cares? If the film doesn't care, why should I? On it, within that opening sequence, and then you straight away get a really nice gore kill just to let you know where we are. Um, Tommy's friends, you know, is, you know, is it his heart? Or is it just, just some of the guts anyway, just 
Jason just goes right through him and pulls it back at the other side just to say, hey, guess who's back? Um, and I'm, I'm not an ambulance driver, you can believe me this time. Um, and then, of course, we get that legendary, legendary opening credits part where it's James Bond for no reason. I adore that. Mm. Where, where, where Jason comes along and walks, you know, just, just as Bond does, but instead of shooting down the gun barrel, he throws the knife. I think that's yeah. right. I think it's absolutely brilliant. That is where the film is just saying, you're just done for a good time, folks. This is just popcorn entertainment. It's just like going to see Bond. You're not here. You know, it's not going to It's not gonna be high art. It's going to be just a good time. And a good time indeed it is. Um, every step of the way, I think we meet likable characters, interesting characters. Um, I don't think there's... Um, again, your standout character like Jenny, but I think we've got a good ensemble here. Um, Tommy Jarvis is really is actually quite interesting what they've done with Tommy here. Almost like you can ignore what they did with Tommy in the last one. I think it's almost a soft reboot in a way mm. um, with what they've done with Tommy's, especially the end of the last one, because they were originally going to bring back the kids and what's her name from the end of the last one and kill them off um, yeah. before. Um, uh, Paramount kind of put the kibosh on that and there's there's an alternate ending for this that Paramount decided wasn't able to be used as well um, but then you get you get some some quite big stars for a, for a film like this um, like um, Tony Goldwyn is the guy in the um, the car who um, the couple um, who, who are having you know problems backing up the car where it goes into the mud and Jason just won't give away yeah, he would go on to be the voice of Tarzan for Disney. Um, he's in all sorts of movies, and he's been the star of Scandal for about ten years. Um, mm. like a, like a big, big name um, in TV terms. And Jennifer Cook, um, who's our kind of um, main girl, if you want, Meg. Um, I think she's first of all. I think she's fantastic, um, but she is. Uh, the star of V, if you remember that show from the 80s. Um, yeah, she's the star of V. She's mm -hmm. the star child in that. So she she would have been well known to cult audiences in 1986. They would have known exactly. That. So it's the first time where it's it's not recruiting people who have not got any credits. They're actually going for people with, you know, a little bit of notoriety in this one, which is quite cool, which they don't need to at this point for a Friday movie. It's quite interesting that Tom made that decision to cast a few names. Um, to go through the whole film beat by beat, it, it seems almost a bit pointless, but it's got a lot of great Easter eggs because it, it does turn into a, just a great Jason run around once he's, once he's back at... What's it called now? Forest, Forest Green or something? What's the, it's not it's not Crystal Lake. It's uh they've, they've got a new name for it. Forget it. Remember they make it make it a big deal to change the name. Yeah. Of the place. Yeah. Uh, for, whatever it's, it's something like Forest Green. It's something. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, and I like that um they've they've gone to the trouble of reproducing. Camp Forest Green. Or a screen. There we go. Yeah, I knew it was something bland and green. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was um it was quite a cool decision to recreate the original set though and have it, you know, exactly like Friday one. I thought that was cool. So they went to all the bother of changing the name, but changing nothing about the actual place itself, which I thought was <laughs> you think you just get rid of the actual place. Like, let's not have this camp here anymore. This camp's just been a lot of trouble. Um I like the individual parts as it, as it moves forward. I think characters who in other films could be really annoying are killed mm. off at just the right point. Like, uh, what's his name? What's his name is in the sex scene in the RV? Um, oh, oh, shit. Um, he's got a stupid name. I remember thinking you don't get anybody with a name like that here. Um, yeah. Um, oh, I'm terrible God. with the names. I know. I was saying this to somebody the other day. I was like, Friday the thirteenth. You need a fucking wall chart just to remember names. Um, yeah, yeah. If I can find it quickly, uh, court. Yes, court. 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 Fucking court in the act. Um, he's he's quite an annoying character, but luckily enough, they know that, so they bump him off nice and quickly. Yeah. So he gets that um sex scene, and then just boom, 
And that just doesn't take you into, oh, he's been killed in the middle of a sex scene like some of these other movies. Mm. He gets Talk killed. About hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit well, it. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, it's from the, for the first time, it's actually on the service of the story. Yeah. Because to turn that truck over, it's probably the best um, visual effect they've done in any Friday movie, even after this. Um, right. It's all done practically. It looks terrific. It looks absolutely fantastic. And Jason standing on top of it just looks iconic. That is why you have Jason in the hockey mask. That, oh, yeah. the, to me, this is where Jason becomes a real icon of horror when he's standing on top of the, the truck and looking out. And just it, it, He's invincible at this point. So we're yeah. very much into supernatural Jason territory now. There's no pretense of Oh, some of it could be a dream and you can write it off as this and write it off as that. Some of it's a little bit too cute, you know, like, where are you, Tommy? Oh, I'm at the Karloff store. Like, mm, mm, okay, right. We got your Universal Monsters talk. You didn't need to put a Karloff reference in. No. Um, the sheriff's called uh, Gaddis after Mick Gaddis, the horror film director. Um, I hate it when they do that, you know, like when there's films where it's like, hey, I'm down at the Romero factory next to Ramyville. In fact, it's, uh, Cunningham Road is where, where they, they're driving down as well. We're going down Cunningham Road. No, no, great. Yeah. And Sean Cunningham's even getting a shout out in his own franchise. So it's completely breaking the, the fourth wall in, in, in places. Um, and literally, the, the old guy in the graveyard smashes the fourth wall, looks straight down the camera, doesn't he? What's his laying again? He says, um, digging up Jason sounds like a terrible idea. It's what some people won't do for entertainment, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not a particularly good line to beat the fourth wall for. I wouldn't have bothered with that. No. no. Something better. But I was quite happy to see him because he actually looks like uh, Mel Gibson does now. Yeah. An old grizzled drunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it does, doesn't he? He looks like Mel Gibson, uh, just that grey hair and the beard. And he the, does look like... A little bit, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Um, so that cheered me up, imagining that Mel Gibson time travel back in time to be in this movie. Um, but I liked him. He was a cool little character in a couple of scenes. And that's really the movie for me, is that every character who pops up is, is either likeable, serves the plot well, or is just interesting enough to have your attention for that little piece of time they need and then they can be bumped off mm. um, nobody gets my nerves in this film the whole the whole thing court would have if he'd have stuck about but again it's like the script even recognizes that oh he's annoying let's just kill him first yeah you know? um you get some um I, th- I think the only one that I'd say is out of place is the couple that are um, making out in the, the woods and then Jason just stumbles upon them and kills them both that seems a little bit little bit from a different movie because there's no jokes in there whatsoever and apparently um tom was told they had to reshoot a few scenes and add some gore because there weren't enough kills in it um yeah. it made it too funny so i wonder and i don't know if that was just completely added on because there's no other actors from the rest of the movie in that scene and those two actors are only in that scene mm. if those two were just added in post so they could have more kills that, that makes sense to me right Jason himself, um, I think, is really good in this. I think it's um, I can't remember the guy's name. And only, CJ Graham. He only, CJ. only, yeah, he only played him uh, once. And, yeah. Um, and um, I think he's really good in terms of being imposing. He, he knows when to be still. He knows how to use his physique as as being imposing, and mm-hmm. he knows, um, unlike uh, Ted White, who is now dead, folks. Ted White died. Ted's dead. Ted's dead, baby. Yeah. Ted's dead. Yeah. Nice no, going, Davy. Yeah. In the last episode, we had a bit of debate. There's no debate anymore. The coroner's report came back. He dead. Um. So yeah. Sorry, Ted. I mean, he's three hundred years old. Ted, I don't shed a tear for. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> Rest in peace, Charlie Lewis. Um. So I. Red I Redden's. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> goodness gracious, good ball of the fire. Um, the, and the, um, oh. Ted, Ted did the thing where he, he ran quite a bit and whatnot, and I didn't really care for that. And I really like the, this Jason 
just walks briskly but still catches up. It's like the mummy trope in movies where, or zombies, I guess, um, where even if they are walking slowly, they somehow catch up with the person who's running really, really fast, no problem whatsoever. Um, and I think that's more imposing for Jason um, as a supernatural entity as he is now. Why would they need to run? They can do what the plot needs them to, especially in such a goofy version of Friday as this is. Um, to me, this is just the apex of the franchise in terms of, we've seen directors coming in and saying, oh, I can't really do a serious Friday movie and trying to put humour into it. But I think this is the first director and writer, obviously, who's come in and said, no, we're going to start as a comedy. We're, we're not even going to just turn it into a comedy. We're going to start as a comedy from title sequence onwards. We're going to just go straight into comedy um, and pop culture because we've got Alice Cooper, obviously, all over the soundtrack. Tyler, it's right behind you, the two tracks from that album. Um, and that was Alice's kind of comeback, wasn't it? He, for the, kind of sort, yeah. yeah. yeah that was, that was this was just after the blackout records. Yeah, so it was... I mean, it was pretty much his comeback from nearly dying of, you know, his, yeah. his issues, wasn't it? So um, um, it's, it's, it's <laughs> kind of cool. And, and it ties into that whole period of horror with horror and, and um, rock and, and certainly metal. We're starting to mix a lot. Alice Cooper would be in, um, he'd be Freddy Krueger's father, for goodness sake, yep. in, in a couple of years. Um, and, um, you know, it just kind of mixes the whole... The whole if I did Dallas Cooper not do a track for Freddy Five as well, I'm trying to think. Anyway, we can save that for the Freddy series. Um, but it, it gives it a kind of more contemporary feel um, where you have that. It doesn't feel as timeless as, say, the early Friday and, uh, you know, Friday 2. It does feel more contemporary 1980s when you've got Alice Cooper blast and you've got Court with his... I mean, Chris, we've all had ripped jeans in our time, but th those are practically short. So there's, there's only a couple of threads holding those things together. I mean, what the hell? Oh, yeah. What the hell? There's, you know, the, whole, the hole's about 25 inches long. It's most of his leg. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just a fun time. Um, you know, it, it just, there's really, there's no depth to it. It's as shallow as a puddle. But everything's fun along the way. It's just a fun ride where everything is building up. Um, it does some some really nice meta things. I love having the two kids hiding under the beds and uh, thinking they're going to die. What did you want to be when you grew up? You know, I think that's just fantastic. You know, I mean, yeah. the, that anybody that watches this and expects, oh, to be, you know, you have to take this one seriously must be must be on some some good shit man because because this is this is just a total comedy um and and i think it is still my favorite friday movie as we've gone through before how can you possibly really compare it to the first one and the first two because it's so different tonally so different um it's almost more of a hey evil dead 2 did really well you know let's let's see if we can uh, we can do our own horror comedy with with uh, jason running about and we'll have him doing james bond spoofs and we'll have mm. you know universal monsters references and blah 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 yeah um, the ghetto in the car at the start even says i've seen enough horror movies to know that guy with the mask means you know we should be heading back that way you know so if, yeah. just what three movies ago it was just a slight reference to a Fangoria issue was the only kind of meta reference. Now it's just reference after reference after reference, mm. um, which could get tiring, but I think the, the cast keep it fresh, the writing keeps it fresh, and the pacing keeps it fresh. I think it's edited really well and it's, it's done really sharply. Um, the ending that was not allowed that Tom came up with was we were going to meet Mr. Voorhees, um, who was going to, um, it was going to be explained that he... Because remember, we were told that Jason was cremated in one of the other movies, but now all of a sudden there's a grave. It turns out that Mr. Voorhees blackmailed them into not cremating Jason because he knew that fucking lightning would resurrect. Who fucking knows? Um, but we've got Tommy, who's actually interesting to watch here on the last time. Um, we've got a really cool idea to bring it full circle. I think this would have been a cool end for the franchise. I think it's a little bit of a damp squib because um, Tom came up with about five different endings for how to end it. And they went with the most boring one of just having the eye open at the end, even though we've just seen his head shredded a thousand times by blades. 
that was that was that was pretty dull. But I'm not going to dock anything for that. I think it's still a really fun ride. Yeah. Um, in terms of being afraid of movie, I don't know. Again, it's like, how do you compare it to the first and second? It's such a different uh, gambit entirely. Um, but for what it is, as it a piece of enjoyment, I have to give it a ten. I just have to give it a ten because it was like. Yeah, yeah. Every step of the way, I'm just thinking, this is just so much fun. Like, there's yeah. there's nothing in here that I would change apart from one tiny bit at the end, which these films have always got crappy tight song and endings from the studios anyway. Yeah. Um, so that's fine. Um, and yeah, 10, no problem. Happy that this one exists. And a great conclusion to the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. So, yeah. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah, thank you, Davey. So yeah, that was an amazing review. I can't really argue with that at all. Uh, Ryan, thoughts on part six? All right. Um, so Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. Um, let me start this off by giving a little history with this film. Um, as I was first getting into the Friday the 13th series, I was not really a fan of this movie, to be completely honest. Um, I was pretty young at the time. I guess it was like 15, maybe. Just didn't really get the appeal of it. Didn't really find it all that funny. Um, yeah. And I just, I don't know. I thought it was one of the worst of the series. And that was kind of my opinion for a long time of it. Even though I knew that it was one of the better regarded movies. Um but as I got older, it did start to kind of click a bit for me. Um, and at this point, I'm, I would say it's very close to the top for me at this point in my life. I think uh, I was not really a big horror comedy fan at that point, but I've kind of grown on the genre a little bit. Um, so this movie is pretty fresh and I mean it's the Friday the 13th franchise franchise's version of a horror comedy I'm not going to act like it's actually a masterpiece because no. it's really not I mean it's as good as a Friday movie could be yeah and I think it is a fair fairly good movie it's competent it's a lot better made than everything else we've seen so far I'd say this one and four are probably the best ones we've watched so far in terms of the actual filmmaking quality. Um, and this one's definitely even better than four in that mm. regard. Cause I mean, the acting is really good, honestly, um, or at least better than anything we've seen. It's not as sleazy as the other movies. So you could actually watch it more as like an accessible film. Like if you're going to show someone who's like, not really a big horror fan of Friday movie. I would say probably show them this one, honestly, because it's not chock full of like nudity and shit like the other movies. No. Um, it's not quite as gory as the other ones. I actually don't think the kills really. I don't even think they really end up being a huge focus of the film, honestly. Like, they're yeah. honestly the least memorable part of the movie for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I know they're there and they're like, they're well done, but it's not like it's a movie just to showcase kills. They actually made a movie here, yeah. um, which is cool. I mean, I absolutely love the beginning um, with Tommy, who's played by Tom Matthews, and then Ron Palillo, who was on the show welcome back cotter as his friend uh alan yeah and um so they are there and welcome back cotter references bro yeah that well no that's yeah yeah i mean he he did a good job in this um yeah but he obviously dies pretty quick but you do have that kind of like universal horror feel you've got the nice big music to the lightning flashing he gets punched through the heart ron mm -hmm. Polo's character um then you do have the james bond sequence which is pretty funny honestly i mean i think that a lot of the humor in this work 
books and it's it comes yeah. in different forms whether it is little references or it is almost kind of like realizing how stupid the previous movies are and almost being purposely over the top yeah like i think at times the sheriff is purposely over the top although i think he's a great character i think he's really really well done and well acted too yeah. by david kagan but i think that especially at the beginning how mad he is at tommy and how mean it's like this is i feel like this is almost like kind of ironic like there's a little bit of commentary here because this dude it feels a bit like a parody of john saxon's dad uh, character in elm street one kind of yeah a little bit or even just other dickhead cops in the series basically mm. just because the, the dad element that's what i'm thinking of more well no definitely and i mean i think that they might have learned a thing or two of how to make a movie from Nightmare on Elm Street mm-hmm. with this too. Um, Cause it's so, it's so well done in a filmmaking regard, but um, I do, I want to say about that dad, just while it's on my mind. I mean, he is like the dickhead cop, but at the yeah. same time, you also do see him as someone who just cares about his town too. Right. Right. Like, he doesn't seem like he's being a dick just to be a dick he seems like he actually really cares about his town and is worried about what could happen um and also i mean he's a father so worried about his daughter too i mean i think that he's a complex character because he would be like oh he's an asshole he's just like me the entire movie but he also does show goodness in many scenes especially like when he um the way he is with the kids he's yeah. very comforting with them and stuff yeah. um and he obviously cares about people i mean he's even he even shows empathy to tommy like i'm really sorry about what happened to yeah. you and your family and stuff but i just can't sure. let this shit happen again like you gotta you gotta get out of here or whatever you know yeah tommy doesn't listen because he's a moron right. honestly i mean i i'm gonna be completely honest this is my least favorite tommy jarvis really um, okay I think he's fine. I don't know though. I think he's a little too stonery, honestly. He's kind of, oh hey man, what's up, man? All this stuff. Like, I don't know. Like it just doesn't fit. Like versus Car- Corey Feldman's okay. character. And then um John what is it, Jonathan Shepard's character? Yeah. I feel like he's just a little goofy. It almost feels like if you had like Bill and Ted playing tommy jarvis honestly (laughs) it's just kind of silly to me but he does fine i mean he's a good actor and like i think he still does fine he's just my least favorite of the three i don't really dislike any of the tommy jarvis's um Mm. i actually like john shepherd i mean it's over the top but i think he does fine for what the movie is um and i think that Tom Matthews basically does the same. I don't know. He's just a eh, little too silly for me. Um, mm. But I do love Jennifer Cook. She's yeah. awesome. Um, she's funny. She has a lot of great lines. She's just got a general mischievous nature to her, which I really like a lot. Um, she's a very um she actually does something which is pretty cool i mean she's very involved with like basically like kind of helping with the whole jason thing she's around the whole time she's not just like cowering for fear the whole time she's actually probably a bit tougher than tommy is to be completely honest um in my opinion, which I really like a lot. I think she's a very strong character and she's honestly probably my favorite female character in the series. Her and Jenny, I would say, um, just because they are very like smart and resourceful characters. Um, and I just think, um, I don't know, they actually feel like characters that doesn't feel quite as exploitative as some of the other female characters throughout the series like jennifer cook actually gives a really 
good performance and they gave her a good script too because she has some really good lines throughout um and i don't know i who else in here uh cj graham i think is fine as jason i mean i think he definitely has a good brooding quality and i think he looks really good as jason too um i mean him coming out of that grave is menacing it's like holy shit jason's different than before I think it's honestly foreshadowing to when we get Kane hotter. This is the biggest, the baddest Jason's ever looked up to this point. And I think it's a pretty iconic version of him. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, a lot of the other characters are fine. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say that they're like overly memorable, but they're like good. You know, I think yeah. everybody's pretty well acted. I mean, I think uh, there is a lot of kids stuff and I think that they actually perform pretty well as well i mean Dave, davy you mentioned that line of oh so what were you what did you want to be when you're growing up and so we're dead meat I, <laughs> like it's just you know that's funny that's yes. great delivery by that kid um yes he's hilarious um and i don't know i like that it's at the campsite too um some of the parts um I said, I don't think the kills are really all that memorable. I mean, there's some good ones, I guess. Right. Twisting the head off and things like that. Punching through the heart, the machete while they're like riding on the motorcycle, I think it is, or something like that. There's yeah. Some yeah. yeah. Um, they were told to take out the kills, a lot of the kill stuff, but they were, they had no problem with rooms that were absolutely drenched in blood. Completely. Right. Smooth yeah that has to be the bloodiest room i've ever seen in my yeah. entire life you think johnny depp in nightmare on elm street was in that bedroom because <laughs> it's just all over the place yeah. but um i like some of the goofy stuff in the movie i like the paintball scene it feels all oh, but that it feels like very out of place but in like a perfect way it's so over the top you feel like you're suddenly watching like police academy or some yes shit. That's, yeah right oh, in the absolutely. middle of friday yeah. the 13th, absolutely which okay. i kind of love um and not even like the first police academy you feel like you're watching like police it's academy or yeah yeah, right, the yeah, yeah, the yeah movie. <laughs> like <laughs> and it's, but it's like totally ironic and like meant to be that way at least a lot of the silly stuff is intentional in this movie. Um, so you can't really criticize it if it's fun because that's how they wanted it to be. Mm. Um, so they achieved what they wanted to. I mean, do I think it's one of the best horror comedies of all time? Probably not. To be completely honest, I think there's much funnier ones out there. I don't think this movie is actually like, I think it's funny for a Friday movie. I yeah. don't think in terms of looking at other horror comedies, though, it's overly funny. I think it's what it needed to be for a Friday the 13th movie. Um, I actually think there's still a decent amount I could take kind of seriously in the movie, too. I mean, like I said, some of the stuff like the dad, I mean, even like toward the end of the movie, like his death sequence feels kind of emotional and just yeah. some of the other stuff that right. happens around that time. Like I don't take any of that for laughs. I feel like all that's played very straight. Um, I think honestly, probably near the second half of the movie, it kind of loses the comedy quality yeah, and becomes just a straight Friday movie again. Apart I would say kids. Yeah. Apart from the two kids. I mean, yeah, but that's just like little lines and that's almost more like, uh, you know, Halloween 2018, how there were some funny lines once in a while. Right. Yeah. Although, yeah. Not Although that cool. was, I think that was even more kind of horror comedy than this is. Um, right. yeah. Although I didn't find it very funny to be completely yeah. honest. But um, I don't know the new one's hilariously bad. So. <laughs> I don't know. I've heard mixed reviews. But, um, yeah, so, I don't know. Like I said, production quality, it's well-directed. Um, I think that I think that having Alice Cooper's music in it was really cool. 
I love that man in the mask song at the end of the yeah. dan, 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 dan. Uh, yes. I love all the synths yes. and stuff. It's so 80s and perfect. Mm-hmm. I do kind of love that this one feels like a very 80s movie, but it's like a I can't believe I'm using this word for a Friday movie, but a wholesome 80s film. Like it's not wholesome, but for a Friday Friday movie, it's rather inoffensive. Yes. Even the sex scene is rather inoffensive. It's yeah, honestly nobody, more... nobody's naked in the sex scene. Nobody. No, they're no. basic. I'm pretty sure they're fully clothed. It doesn't yeah. even look like uh, they, it's they, not... yeah, they are fully clothed. It's a bad simulation. They're yeah. basically dry humping on a bed. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> even get a t shirt still half on. You know, it's like nobody, even the guys can't go top this in this one. And they're both wearing pants too. Like yeah. it's, you know, or at least underwear. So it's like, it's very inoffensive. They're just kind of dancing around on the mm-hmm. bed. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, they're tickling. Just, they're tickling. <laughs> it's very much a PG rated movie sexually. Like it, if it wasn't for the gore and I guess some language, it, put, it could have easily been a PG movie. Um, and um so i like that actually it's kind of nice to not really feel that like i need to take a shower after watching it it's just a nice like yeah fun movie that you could watch um and i don't know i i think um i overall i say it's a pleasant experience i don't know i it's hard for me to rank the movie to be completely honest i think in terms of quality it's easily the best movie um yeah. It's growing to be my favorite movie of the series, too. It's almost there, but I still kind of have a bit of a soft spot for, like, two. Mm. Um, I don't know. I. It's rough. I, I'll have a ranking by the end of this series, but I'm just Absolutely. not really sure yet. It's like that two, four, and six. It's like Star Trek. We got even numbers. Yeah, you like, this, you like the search for Spock. I do like search for Spock. Yeah, I like. I also like the motion picture. Yeah, so I no, I I'm just saying what people always say about. Oh, the cliche. Not yeah. not how I actually feel about it because I mm. like. Yeah, we'll talk about that on something yeah, else. Yeah. Um, right. so, coming next week, folks. Yeah, no, <laughs> but yeah, even numbers so far in the Friday series. Although Absolutely. I like five too. Friday is for Ox. But it's all, yeah, it just even it numbers ass. are the best ones so far. Absolutely. And um, so it's hard to rank the three of them. Although I will say this is definitely the best one. I mean, it's a much better movie than two is by far. Um, and it's a much better movie than four is mm. also. I mean, there's a reason it has 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, whereas two has like 33 percent and uh yeah. fret four has like a 22 or something percent it's like this one's a well-made movie yeah um yeah so if i'm gonna rate it in terms of being a movie uh i'm gonna say an eight out of ten it's good it's That's not fair. high it's not high art it's no. friday at 13 we've, we've not rated we've always rated on a friday scale rather than that's where i'm getting to my friday scale i say right. based off of a movie and then on the friday scale it's a 10 out of 10 so sure. i'll give it an 8 and a 10 i think it's a well-made movie a well-made horror movie a well-made horror comedy but not the best of any of those types of genres mm. it's right. just very very well made above average um and it gets better every time i watch it i'd highly recommend if you haven't seen it and if you're trying to introduce somebody to the series who might not be a huge horror fan maybe start with this one absolutely do you know i can't absolutely. believe i can't believe that i forgot to even mention the painful scene because it's <laughs> what i think when i see that scene is imagine this in the middle of friday too <laughs> You know, how out of place, like how far we've come in the space of a few movies where it's turned into Caddyshack for 10 minutes. Right. 
just bizarre scene. And those bandanas they wear. Dead. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, funny. They know what they're doing in this. They know. God no. <laughs> awesome. Well, awesome. Thank you, Ryan. And mm-hmm. we are going to be pretty much staying positive this entire video because I fucking love this movie. This movie is freaking awesome. I'm not going to say this is my favorite Friday. I am still going to definitely 100% give that to two, mainly because of Jenny. But this movie is probably, I would usually, I think of this movie as a very close second. And I can honestly say that number two and number six are my most, most viewed Friday the 13th, I would probably say. I probably go would say I would go back to this one and to probably the most out of the entire franchise. So yeah, I have so much history with uh, Part 6, Jason Lives. I mean, it's... I can honestly say, yeah, I've watched this movie a shit ton of times. And I, it just gets... Ryan said it perfectly. It just gets better and better every viewing. I love this movie to death. Uh, Tom McLaughlin really kicked it out of the park because not only is this a great friday movie i think it's just all all in all very well made movie by we already mentioned the score and alice cooper what's fucking better than that you got the score you have the lighting the atmosphere this movie just has it all very very well made the production value i mean what a shift changer going from five all the way to this i mean the shift is ginormous I mean, five, I mean, go back to my, our, uh, part five review where we all pretty much raved about five surprisingly, but with all that being said, we are all very well aware that five is probably not the best made movie in the world. This movie is just a gigantic shift change. The production value just went sky high. I think this is probably the most self-aware Friday the 13th as well. While, you know, the horror comedy thing has been there since the first movie. I it, That pretty much goes without saying. However, there was still pretty much a serious tone between the first movie through, I would say, probably through five. They still had that serious tone to it. This movie is just a full-on comedy. Tom McLaughlin really looked at the Friday the 13th franchise and said, okay, this is just goofy as all fucking hell. Some weird guy with a mask killing everybody. I'm just going to have a shit ton of fun with that co- type of concept. You know, so it's very, very self-aware that this, you know, this franchise, this is just a full-on comedy. <laughs> and that, and it just goes back to that paintball scene. Watch that paintball scene. That's really all you need to know. Like, it's just a full-on frigging comedy. So, um, yeah, with all that being said, yeah, so this is just a full-on horror comedy. I'm going to go right into my positives, right with C.J. Graham. I love, love C.J. Graham. I think he is, this is definitely a precursor to Kane Hodder by far. He is definitely the most intimidating out of the five. I think he really, he just dives deep into this character of Jason. I don't, I don't know what it is. I love, I love Ted White. I don't know who's better, Ted White or um, C.J. Graham. Because they, they both have their little things, you know, but CJ Graham, I think he's just a more intimidating version of Ted White. You know, he's bigger, he's badder. I love the look. I love the look that CJ Graham uh, puts out on Jason. He, Jason might look a bit of like a carpenter at times, but I think that the look of Jason is very intimidating. And I don't know, I just love the look of Jason. I, Ryan, I have to respectfully, well, disrespectfully disagree with you. I love, love Tom Matthews' version of John, Tommy Jarvis. I freaking love, John Hugh, I mean, John Stewart, John Stewart, right? It's John Stewart. It's Jonathan John, Shepard. John Shepard, what the fuck? Um, John Stewart plays Jason? Best that, would, that would be pretty fucking sick, right? <laughs> The Daily anyway, yeah. Show with Jason. That would be pretty sick. I would pay to see that. <laughs> but anyway, so you have, yeah, Jason you have John. Politicians for an hour and a half. <laughs> but yeah, you have John Shepard as um, part, part five, Tommy Jarvis. And I don't know. I watch my review of part five. 
I'm not into John Shepard's portrayal of Tom Jarvis at all. Uh, he was just too weird for me. He was too, like, I kind of um, made the simu- is very similar to like um, to Angela and Sleepaway Camp, but Angela's fucking awesome. John John Shepard's version of Tommy Jarvis was, and Corey Feldman. I really like Corey Feldman's portrayal of Tommy Jarvis as well. But I don't know. I think when I think of Tommy Jarvis, I think of Tom Matthews. Tom Matthews really does knock this character out of the park. I he might be a little quirky at times. He might make a lot of really stupid decisions, but. I don't know. It's something about Tom Matthews. He really, really brings this character to life. But um, yeah. So that's a little bit of Tom Matthews, and then you have Megan. You pretty much um, I would say t- Tommy Jarvis's secondhand woman. Uh, what can be said about Megan? She is f- Jennifer Cook. Really, really knocked this character out of the park. She is f- absolutely phenomenal. I don't know who's better, honestly. I don't know if Megan is better than Tom Jarvis or Tom Jarvis is better than Megan, as far as part six is concerned. Because I, I both they just work very well together. You know, I can't... I mean, I still love Jenny. Jenny is the definitive final girl. And I don't know if you would call Megan a final girl, really, but Megan is a very, very close second. If you were to consider her a final girl, she is a very close second. Jenny is still number two, number one, but Megan is definitely very, very, a very close second. So yeah, that's a little bit on her. As far as the other characters go, they're fine. You know, they're not like um, super extremely memorable. You don't have too many memorable lines, I would say. You don't have... I mean, they're fine. They're just kind of there. Uh, they're just typical, fr- you know, Friday the 13th characters. They're just kind of there to be there. But they're not really, like, offensively bad. You know, you don't have any Shelleys in f- Friday Part 6. So it, 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 you you all these characters I don't have too much of an issue with. So, yeah, that's a little bit of the characters. But so you have those standout characters like Megan. You have Tommy Jarvis. CJ Graham as Jason, and then you have these characters that are just kind of there. Um, I do, and one thing I have to really give Part Six is I really like the little things here and there. Like you have um those two girls in the cabin, and you know the this one girl, it's like she kind of brings out these deck of cards, and um she kind of makes up this Jason game, and like she lays out six cards. And then she's explaining the rules of this certain card game where, you know, you have to guess which cabin Jason is in. Something weird like that. But it's just little scenes like that that really kind of like put a smile on my face, really makes these characters stand out and make them a little bit more realistic. So little stuff like that I really appreciate. And you guys mentioned the two kids, you know, the dead meat kids. I think that I think. Those kids are freaking awesome. The little bits that we get from these two kids, I think is just gold. <laughs> it's on, it's absolute gold. And that kid that uh, produces the dead meat line. I wish we had more of this kid, honestly. <laughs> I love this kid. Yeah, he should join up with uh, Reggie the Righteous, man. Yeah, he yeah, should, seriously. He seriously. He could take down Jason in five minutes. Yeah. But yeah, I think we're dead meat kid. Uh, he's awesome. And that's another thing with um, Friday Part 6. You finally have more kids in Friday the 13th. You know, you have... you. <laughs> you fi- finally got kids out of their crazy. Yeah, you pretty much... Yeah, you finally have kids, right? Like, we're talking about a summer camp for kids. Like, ever since... Right from the first movie, you're talking about a summer camp. But there's literally no kids. You, you know, the first kid is literally Tommy Jarvis in Part 4. <laughs> And then you have part five, you have Reggie. But this movie, it's literally based on kids. So I really like that little change of pace. And, and it, makes, it, it makes it make sense. You finally see kids in a summer camp. <laughs> but yeah, um, what else can be said about part six? This movie is just classic. I really love the third act, you know, where, um, where Tommy Jarvis is yelling at Jason calling him maggot head and everything and there you know jason 
chases Tommy Jarvis toward, towards the boat. They start battling out. The fi- There's fire all over the place, all over the water. And I don't know. This is probably the mo- one of the most intense final acts in Friday the 13th. I, it's so badass. It's hilarious, but it's so badass all at the same time. It's just horror comedy gold in that third act. Absolute genius. <laughs> But yeah, I can't really say anything negative, to be honest. I just fucking love this movie. It's so well done. Very, very well paced. And Ryan, you said it perfectly. If you're going to introduce somebody to Friday the 13th, or if somebody, you talk to somebody that's not really the, a huge fan of horror, you're not going to go wrong with introducing that particular individual to this movie. And uh, I... Granted, I probably, I probably would if someone was to say, "Hey, get me into Friday the Thirteenth." This would be the first movie I would probably give them. It's not. There's literally, there's literally no nudity in this movie, and it, again, that's going back to the shift between five and six. Five, you have a soft core porn director. Number one, number two, it's literally tits and kills. <laughs> If it's not a tit scene, it's a kill scene. If it's not a kill scene, it's definitely a tit scene. This movie, it just... I mean, the kills are there. I mean, Ryan, you pretty much said it perfectly. The kills are there, but they're not very memorable. You know, a lot of these are... Except for, you know, Alan getting the, you know, hand through the chest. That's probably the most gruesome kill you're going to get. But other than that, you're gonna get you're getting a lot of screen kills. You're getting a lot of stabs. You're getting a lot of slices. You're you know little stuff like that. Yeah, and that's what Nothing. I like honestly because it's like you said scream. I mean, you don't watch scream for the kills. You watch you don't scream watch scream for, for the, the kills. Movie. You watch yeah you watch it for the movie. Yes, exactly. So yeah, you're not really getting too many memorable kills here. Def- and you're definitely not getting any nudity at all in this movie. Uh, so yeah, it is it is a nice change of pace. And Ryan, again, you said it perfectly. You can watch this movie without you know needing to take a shower. <laughs> so it's ve- it's definitely the cleanest Friday the Thirteenth. And I don't know. I just every time I watch this movie, I just have an absolute blast with it. As far as the rating goes, because I really can't think of. Too much to say that's considered negative. The only thing I can probably say that's negative is just that gigantic shift change. You know, that gigantic change of pace between, you know, what we got in the first five movies and then you have this. Something just doesn't add up. You know, you have the really, really awkward John Shepard in, uh, as the portrayal of Tommy Jarvis. And then you have the badass Tom Matthews. That's just a weird, weird sh- shift change. But then again, you really just, you just, if you take this movie seriously, you're just not going to have a good time with it. So it's, that's just a, an extreme, that's just an extreme, extreme minor, extremely minor negative. Overall, I, I think this be that's a positive, Tyler. I think it's so positive that they decide it, to change it's it. A, it could be considered a positive too. Absolutely. Um, I just think just because of that gigantic shift change, it just feels a little out of place. You know, he's John Shepard is just very awkward, very timid, barely talks, just this overall fucking weirdo. And then you have Tom Matthews, which is just badass, and he just wants wants revenge on Jason. You know, the Corey Corey Feldman and um, Tom Matthews portrayal of Tommy Jarvis. Those two really link together, and you know John Shepard's version is just kind of there. But I can believe that you know the Corey Feldman portrayal grew up to be the Tom Matthews portrayal, if that makes sense. Because you know you have the Corey Feldman uh, portrayal where you know you get to that third act in part four where he's just stabbing the hell out of Ted White. Tom Matthews is kind of in that same boat. You know he just wants revenge on Jason. He just wants. He wants Jason. Then you have John Shepard. That's just he's John Shepard is literally a pussy. He's just he's very quiet. He's very timid. I I, I don't know. I I just don't like John he Shepard's portrayal. Whoops. He whoops a few people to ask John he, Shepard. He you do have those occasional weird fight scenes, but I don't know. I <laughs> think personally, I think John Shepard's closer to what older Tommy would be like. That's you just think my so? opinion. I do. 
I mean, if we're going in the actual narrative of the story, I feel like that's about a lot more like he overdid it. But I think it's more realistic to because, I mean, Tommy's a weird kid. And he's Tom, a weird kid. But Tom, yeah. Tom no. Matthews wasn't going to work in a mental institution for six months to, to practice his craft, was he? Like the, Ryan's totally right. This this guy is he's been in Return of the Living Dead, so he knows he knows horror comedy already. Yeah. He's one of the main stars. Um he's clearly just he knows exactly what to do with it. He's not a method actor like uh, right. like our, our last pal fancied himself. Who did you say you thought it was again? John Stewart? No, that's... <laughs> um, I, yeah, I I get why you guys don't like John Shepard, but I think if I I do because I think it fits more in the actual storyline more. Yeah. Like I said, I feel like Tom Matthews, he's a good lead, but he doesn't feel like Tommy Jarvis to me. He feels like he could have been any lead in a horror comedy at this time kind of movie. Like he could have played fair. the same exact character in Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, and it would have been the same exact character. Like I just feel like yeah, yeah. he's yeah. playing he's playing Tom Matthews, whereas John Shepard played Tommy Jarvis. Um, and it's almost like a Keanu Reeves performance. It's like, yeah. come and get me, Maggie Head. <laughs> come on, Maggie Head. Well, I love that. The, I love the, that. <laughs> and a film where we've got the old guy. Saying, yeah. that, what do you think I am? A fart head, like you know, right? It right, fits. I'm just saying, I don't it think fits, it's yeah. Tommy Jarvis. Uh, dialogue okay, isn't, isn't a problem for me. I, I can, but, yeah, I can, I, I see where you're coming from with that. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I just, also, I'm also happy with Tommy using bad dialogue because he's been yeah. in a mental situation, isn't he? So, you know. oh, yeah, no, you're right, you're absolutely no. right, but yeah, I don't know. I uh, I, why is he I just, still there, by the way? Why is he still being locked up first? Yeah. That's the other thing. It's like, that's the other thing. John Shepard's character, you could see why he's locked up. Yeah. Tom Matthews. It's like, why was this dude in a mental institution? Yeah, that's what he's, no, you're right. You're right. Totally <laughs> and, and his buddy from Welcome Back, Carter. Uh, not, John, not John Travolta, the other one. Um, oh, John Travolta should be in this. Um yeah, it's, none of them seem like they've come out of the mental institution. They just seem like Frankenstein and Igor, don't they? They don't seem like they've got any real problem. They seem like Bill society. and Ted. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, yeah. that's... <laughs> Which I've got no problem with for this movie. And I, I guess that's the real issue is whether or not people, and most people seem able to, um, people can accept the jump in tone from movie to movie, which I yeah. think you have to. And I think it's telling, Tyler, that your favourites are too... And this, or yeah. you're most rewatched, because if you're in the mid for for two, you're probably not saying to yourself, "Or oh, I might watch six. It's probably right. an either, you know, you're probably in two very different moods when you decide that one. Like two is a much darker, grittier. Whereas right. I, bet, I bet you this one you've watched more when you've had a few beers and you just want a good time. You know, you're not really wanting the. Uh, yeah, absolutely one of those one of those experiences um this is just a good time so it's it's quite telling those are the two different ends of the spectrum and those are your two most watched right right yeah i couldn't agree more i mean this movie is just a great time it's you real. it's a movie you really can't take seriously this is this is the evil dead 2 version of friday the 13th <laughs> it's just it it just goes for it it's very extremely self-aware like I said before, in when I was first starting my review, Tom McLaughlin really, it seems like he looked at the franchise and just saw it for what it is. Just a goofy, just a really goofy, dark comedy. And he just went for it. He went there, and this is what you get. Oh, all right. So as far as the rating goes, I, this is really tough. This is really tough. Because this is probably, as of right now at least, my second favorite. This is definitely my second favorite movie. You know, number two will always be my number one. This is a very close second. You know, it could change, but this is, as far as right now, this is my number two. I'm probably going to give this a nine out of ten. Uh, as far as the movie goes, as far as the Friday the 13th movie goes, 
This is like a 50 out of 10. <laughs> as far as production goes, as far as camera work goes, atmosphere, so on and so forth, this is a very well-crafted movie. I mean, obviously not a work, work of art. You know, you're not going to see this movie being hailed as, I don't friggin' know, Great Gatsby or whatever. This movie, it's just... It's a it's a great time and it's very very it's a very well made horror comedy. This this film is better than any version of the Great Gatsby. The 1940s, oh, the 1970s, 100%. the 2013 is better than all three of those versions. It is, it is. So yeah, that's probably my rating. I'm gonna give this a nine out of ten overall. As far as the Friday movie, it's like it's it broke the scale. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. That those are our reviews of part six. Jason lives. Is there anything you guys want to add? Is there anything you guys maybe forgot? No. If I forgot, then I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Well, I think this is probably a good, probably a good way to wrap this up. All positive reviews. This movie is a banger of a film. Very different from the Friday the Third. Pretty much, this movie is very different from any Friday the Thirteenth movie. <laughs> There you go. Love this movie to death. If you haven't watched it, definitely go out and buy it because you're going to have a fucking blast. <laughs> so that's it. That, those are our reviews. Davey, Ryan, both of you guys have YouTube channels. Anything you guys need to add or anything you guys need to plug? Um, so I got All a right. channel called Ryan's Final Destination. Um, we, or I, um, I guess we, if I think of all the people who are on the channel, but um, some stuff that has happened recently, new Lynch talks with the book house boys came out, looked at episodes three and four of season one of twin peaks. So that was Davey and I, um, our buddy Joey, I do a work at the perfume counter at horns department store, if you know what I mean, but um, um, yeah, so he might be back next episode, but he will be, but um. Let's see. Also, Zero the Hero did one about One Miss Call that came out, I don't know, like a couple weeks ago. Davey was actually on that too. And we're doing Beethoven's third for, <laughs> for next month. Um, let's see. I've got concert review about the Michael Shanker show I saw. Um, my Star Wars, a personal retrospective series. Coming up, I got Muppets with uh, John and John Klauser and uh, Davey and maybe, I think Tyler, maybe we were talking it's about. A, but... Yeah, it's a maybe. Uh, I, yeah. I, I'll let you know about that one. Come on, yeah. am I or a Muppet? <laughs> am I a man? No, but uh, that's all I got to plug. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, definitely check out Ryan's Final Destination. Davey, what's going on with Davey Cinema Flicks and Music Picks? Well, um, I've got a show called Feeling the Monday Blues, where it's... Strike that, reverse. Um, the usual nonsense, Tyler, where I, I still got to remember what I did yesterday. Yeah. Um, my brain medicine, man. Um, I feel Ryan's, that. Ryan's going to be on, and we're going to be doing a review of um, Phantom of the Paradise, Brian De Palma's 1973 Comedy, horror, musical, rock opera. 74. 1978, um, <laughs> 1979. Um, yeah, everything in the movie. Um, people haven't seen Phantom of the Paradise, they're really missing out. It's an absolute yeah. uh, film and a half. Um, uh, what else have we been on recently? Reanimator, this exact same panel. We did Reanimator recently. And, uh, there we'll you be, go. We'll be doing uh, Bride of Reanimator um, in two, three, four weeks, whenever we pencil a date in for that. Six years, who knows? We might wait until, you know, real time, like they did with the sequel. We might just come back in five years. But we'll do it. That's the main thing. Yeah. Um, and then apart from that, fucking Google Mail probably pop up in some police search. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so definitely check out Davey and Ryan's channels. Uh, check the description below. Both of your channels will be linked. So yeah, definitely check those out. You are watching LP Tremors and subscribe, hit the bell, 
you'll see what you'll see what I'm cooking. Um, but <laughs> as far as segment. um, yeah, I, I mean, Davy, I'm in the same boat. I can't remember what I did a couple hours ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, yeah. So LP tremors. Get ready for music shit. Get ready for some horror shit. Um, few things I'm kind of cooking. I'm cooking up a few things. I'm going to um. I'm eventually going to get a full review out of Halloween Ends. So Halloween Ends just came out a week ago. I'm probably going to be doing a full review on that. And um, other than that, stay tuned. LP Chimers, subscribe. You you guys all you guys know the nine yards. Copy and paste what every single YouTuber ever says. There you go. Yeah. Unless you're Jamie Lee cuts this, in which case, piss off. You're a tedious bitch. Yeah, there you go. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I can't argue with that. <laughs> All right, so. Idiot, so witch. Davey, Ryan, anything you guys want to close out on? Anything you guys are just itching to say? Yeah, I want to, I want to do your stay metal, stay safe with you. I think we should all do that together. Sorry, Jamie Lee. Ah, fuck off. You hate it as well. It was actually Ryan that fed I know me. I do. She, she is, yeah. <laughs> really, if you think about it, it's all about Black Lives Matter. No, it isn't. Fuck off. Fuck out of here. Fuck all right, so it. with all that being said, for Davey, for Ryan, I am Tyler. This is LP Tremors. Stay tuned for the rest of the Friday the 13th franchise. We are going to be doing number seven, The New Blood. And uh, within probably a week or two, so stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for more Friday the 13th shit. And that is all we got for you guys. And stay metal. Stay safe. Bye, guys.